and welcome to another video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. So I got a number of requests coming in for uh, analog to digital conversion videos. Uh, I've browsed the internet and there is uh, really a lot out there uh, which covers most stuff already. But then I got a question how to convert a locomotive with dual motors. Well, that's a locomotive which has motors in more than one of the parts. And I actually have one of those. This is uh, an analog AC uh, model from Märklin, number 3349. And it has motor in both these parts of the locomotive. So I will go ahead and make a conversion of this. It's not tricky. Uh, you need two motor conversion parts, uh, kits, and then you need one decoder. So that's how we're gonna do it. Let's get started. So here goes, this is Märklin model 3349 and the decoder kit is 60976. I put the loco on my ultrasoft anti-static mat and unscrew the three screws that holds the three chassis. Very simple. This device uh, changes the direction of the locomotive as well as the lamps. That needs to be removed. It has to do with the analog system. This is the motor. Uh, this is a drum collector type motor. It's great, but we need to replace the motor shield or brush shield. That's the plat plastic part which is removed now. We also need to remove the rotor or the armature. It is a three pole uh, rotor as standard in these type of models and it needs to be replaced by a five pole rotor. So now we removed everything which was uh, necessary for the analog operation of this loco. Now it's time to add the parts we will instead need for the digital operation. I'm using two piece motor kits from Märklin, item 60941. Each kit contains from a motor shield and a rotor, a armature, a magnet, two drossels, motor brushes and a ground terminal. If you are unsure about what kit to use, ask your dealer, they will advise you to the correct motor conversion kit. So let's start the assembly. I insert the magnet with the rotor install and then I put the um, um, motor shield on top. Make sure everything pops into the right position. It can be a bit tricky. Once that's ready, it's time to assemble the motor brushes. So there they are. The motor brushes are put into their pockets. Make sure to place them the correct way, uh, which corresponds to the round shape of the rotor. And put the spring in place, which presses them towards the rotor, like that. So, now with the motor parts in place, it's time to add the digital propulsion stuff, which is the decoder. We're kicking off the assembly work by cutting the leads of the inductor to a proper length. The inductor will then be soldered to the terminals of the motor, but first I put some tin on the terminals, just to make sure that the soldering goes easy and smooth once I have the components in my hand. So here I also fix the component and make sure that the soldering looks okay. And same thing on the other side. In this locomotive type, uh, Merklin has uh, conveniently placed a connector board in the middle section of the locomotive. That's where we will put our decoder, the 60976. This decoder kit contains also from many parts. There is a plastic part with a kind of a holder for the uh, motherboard. The motherboard really does not contain any electronics, just a connector and the wires that will go out to the different consumers. 
This is the speaker, which we will connect to the uh, decoder. Let's leave the decoder in the package for now, because it's sensitive to electric uh, static charge. So I start off by assembling this uh, plastic uh, uh, holder to which the motherboard easily snaps in. There is a plastic wing which says click when it's in place. Then I start to solder the feed and I'm starting to solder the feed to the chassis, which is the brown cable. And you see, I attach it to this connector board. And you also see that two brown cables already are in place and connected to the chassis. The red cable is connected to a new island on this, or a connector point. And I connect the wire coming up from the slider to that position. Time for the forward lighting. The forward lighting, I just route the cables past the motor and over to the lamp. And on the lamp socket, I solder the cables. Let's do the same thing for the rear lights. All right, now it's just two more cables to connect, and that is the motor cables. They have the same color as the cables already routed in the locomotive to the forward and reverse engine. So I just connect that in parallel with those. And then I also connect the wires in the other end to the inductors. The speaker is conveniently connected with its connector and the speaker itself is fixed with a double-sided adhesive tape. Finally, we take the decoder and we push it in place. Make sure to put it the right way. So, now everything is in place for a digital operation. There is a lot of things that could be added, like uh, lights in the cabin and uh, also rear lights and uh, lights in the motor room, uh, plus, 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 plus. So there's a lot of enhancements and uh, outputs available on the decoder, uh, but we'll leave that for now. Let's check it out and see how it works on the layout. I start by switching off the track power. And then I put my locomotive onto the programming track, which is a separate track which I have placed on my layout next to the locomotive shed. Then I turn the power on and after a while the MFX symbol will show up and it will read the settings from the decoder and save that into the central station. Thank you very much for watching. Now you got your fair share of motor parts and digital uh, circuit boards uh, for a long time. So uh, I hope you liked it, the uh, conversion video. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more of the videos I have on my channel, which is uh, tutorials on landscape, scenery, and uh, also this time of tech videos, layout videos, uh, subscribe to the channel and you will get a notification once next video goes live. Until that happens, see ya!